Hi, right, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics, and in this video, I'd like to discuss what might be the most interesting fusion of politics and statistics that I've ever discussed. Thanks to the work of anti poverty campaigner Jack Monroe, the Office for National Statistics has recently reported that it will use her concepts for revising their inflation figures. This is actually big news, bear with me. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So for the past week or so, I've had quite a few people pointing me at Monroe's arguments and work and saying, Phil, Phil, do this. Yes, yes, patience, grasshopper. But now that we've had the fruits of her labour announced, and it is now time. So I'm going to split this into two parts. The first is my general attitude towards inflation, if you'd have asked me about this weeks ago, say in political discussions, how do you use inflation? And the second is on the consequences of this change in policy from the ONS. So first, inflation. We know what inflation is, don't we? It is the percentage increase in the cost of living as compared to the previous comparable period. In most cases, we talk about annual inflation figures. So we're mostly, uh, for political purposes, talking about how much things have gone up in the last year. And, 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 and we know that what that headline inflation figure is. Uh, for the UK, if you're interested in inflation, we know it's 5.4%. That means that your cost of living has gone up 5.4% in the last year. Only it probably hasn't. The inflation figure used is for what is termed a standard basket of goods. But if the goods you buy are different, as is almost certain, then your, your personal inflation is different. Like if you buy a higher proportion of the goods that's actually gone down in price, well, your personal inflation may be lower. If you buy more of the stuff or a higher proportion of your income on the stuff that's gone up a lot in price, then your personal inflation figure is higher. And this matters. Like when I've used inflation in the past, like in this spreadsheet, for example, where I calculate the real terms average income rises under different governments over similar periods of time, I use that ONS inflation figure. So if inflation is 2% for one particular year, but you got a pay increase of 2.5%, you got a real terms pay increase. However, if your personal inflation was actually 3%, because the goods you buy is not in line with that standard basket of goods, then you've actually had a real terms pay cut. Now, I will say at this point, you do have to have, to a certain extent, standard figures for inflation. You know, if you're going to judge the government on real terms income, you have to compare the medium income for certain groups with a, with a single measure of inflation. You can't bash or praise a government based on a few isolated case studies that either work in favour or against what you want to argue for. You know, so if the medium income of this group, which might be the whole country, increases above the level of inflation for that same group, then you have to accept there's been a real terms income increase for at least half of the population of that group, which may be the country. And, and, and it was the country uh, for this figure, you know, and this was the case under the last Labour government, for example, also to a lesser degree, the previous Conservative government. But the medium income has fallen behind the level of inflation for, for the current Conservative government, which first came to power in 2010. So inflation is not too crazy for them. You know, and, and you, can, you can't deny that. But how do you determine the standard basket of goods? How do you work that out? There are various ways to do it, and there'll be pros and cons to each one. There is no definitively right answer from a mathematical point of view as such. But given that inflation is an important statistic for politics, what we need is the one that best represents a suitable yardstick for political judgment. And you, you give something like that to a mathematician every day of the week, they'll just say, well, you just do the median average. And indeed, that is what is done. So if your standard basket of goods is aimed at the average person, you might say, well, that's the obvious way to manage it, isn't it? And, and maybe it's not. Right now, the cost of living is rising sharply. As I said, inflation right now, 5.4%. People's incomes have mostly not been going up that far, and 2022 is set to get much worse. Now, consider a middle-aged person who might be that average person with a good job. Their income is spent on rent or mortgage, then their groceries, then their bills, pension contributions, some general spending, saving for major purchases like holidays, cars, home improvements and so on, and then savings for the longer-term retirement, whatever. When the cost of living goes up for these people, they don't have to live their lives any differently. They can cut back here or there. They can cut back on their holiday spending that year, cheaper holiday maybe. Or they can put off the new car for another year because actually it's still fine. Worst case scenario, they don't have to save as much for their retirement. Um, it cuts out of that. But they don't have to cut back on their spending. They could choose to, but they don't have to. But there are people whose income goes on the rent or the mortgage, then the food, 
then the bills, and then that's it. And sometimes they can't afford all the bills, so they have to do without something like heating or hot water. High inflation is more important for these people because there's no slack in their budget. If the cost of these expenses goes up and their income does not increase to match, they have to cut back on what many of us would consider the bare essentials, not the long-term saving. Something else, food, heating, something like that. Now imagine that these people do not have the same standard basket of goods. There isn't any furniture in their spending likely, and that is in the standard basket of goods. May not go on holidays, that is also in the standard basket of goods. And, and, and but those things that they do not spend their money on are built into the normal way of recording inflation. What if someone on the low income end of the spectrum spent all their money on things where the increase is generally above the standard inflation measure? What if people on low incomes, the very people more sensitive to rising costs, generally experienced a significantly higher personal inflation than we're getting from the standard measure? It would mean that we are judging the government's record on the economy too softly. It would be good to keep the cost of living down for everyone, but surely it can be agreed that where there are priorities, it's more important to help people at the low income end cope with the cost of living than those at the high income end, or even in the middle. And here is where we introduce Jack Munro. Now, she argued that the cost of, of cheaper foods, for example, has increased much more as availability has fallen. She worked on an inflation index based on this more realistic basket of groceries for those on the tightest of budgets. She gave examples. She cited as one example in 2012, Sainsbury's had their basic range of 10 stock cubes for 10p. 10 years later, it is now 39p, for beef and chicken stock cubes, but you cannot get vegetable stock cubes for less than a pound for 10. That's a tenfold increase in 10 years. She also pointed out that the cheapest pasta in Asda was 29p for 500 grams last year. Now the cheapest you can get is 70p, which is a 141% increase. If you need to spend all your income on accommodation, essential utilities and food, think about what's happening here. We're already told we're going to be paying twice as much on energy bills in this year. You're paying maybe more than twice as much on food. If your rent has stayed the same, then this would still mean your personal inflation could easily be 20%, 30%, 40%, could be more. That's not a stretch. So the official average inflation figure of 5.4%, as high as that is traditionally, looks like a luxury. But now the Office for National Statistics has agreed that using a single value for inflation is not helpful. They've agreed that a wider range should be used for a range of not only income levels, but circumstances as well. Like, for example, you could have two households on the same income, living side by side, same income. But if one of them has a mortgage and they work nearby, so they just toddle off to work on, on their bike or just walk, their cost of living can be a lot lower than the person living next door who is renting that property and has to drive to work each day. Now, obviously, from a political point of view, if the ONS present a range of inflation measures, obviously the media and the government can choose to use whichever suits them, and they will do. But it also means that campaigners can point to different groups and, and look at how they're protected or failed as well. I imagine how it would look come the next election. People are showing that low paid nurses are getting a much worse real terms pay cut by the government than already appears to be the case with this single figure used now. Because if their personal inflation is, is likely as a group to be significantly above this median value, then their meagre pay increase is gonna look even worse. And they could contrast this with how MPs appear to be getting real terms pay increases at the same time. Even outside election time, if people think an inflation rate of 5% looks bad, how are they gonna to react to being told that the lowest paid workers saw inflation rises of 20%, 30%, more maybe. This is pretty big news. And it should allow a much richer political discussion on the issue of real terms, incomes and cost of living. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.